Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Skyrim Zimik. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 5th of April. India's daily virus cases breached 100,000 mark for first time. Over two dozen people killed in Bangladesh ferry capsize. And Sri Lankan Catholics call for justice two years after Easter attacks. And now for all the details. With 103,558 fresh COVID-19 cases, India on Monday reported the biggest ever daily surge. This comes as India last week expanded its vaccination drive by giving the jabs to all those who are 45 and above. India on Monday reported a record rise in COVID-19 infections, becoming the second country after the United States to post more than 100,000 new cases in a day. The country's daily infections have risen about 12-fold since hitting a multi-month low in early February, when authorities eased most restrictions and people largely stopped wearing masks and following social distancing. With 103,558 new infections, India has now reported 12.6 million cases and deaths jumped by 478, raising the total to 165,101. India has recorded over 1 lakh new cases and close to 500 deaths due to corona in the last 24 hours. It's a frightening number. And the sad part is that the numbers are continuously rising and the rate of rise is also rising. Something emergent and something drastic needs to be done immediately to control this. Lockdown will be less, so less people will stay in their home, they will stay safe, they will be able to control the virus. How many people are getting positive today, they are not able to go here, they are not able to go there, they will be less, less people will be less, people will be less, people will be less. Today, there are so many people in the hospital, in medical, in the bed, this comes as India, the world's biggest maker of vaccines, has injected 77 million doses at home since starting its campaign in the middle of January, the third highest after the United States and China. The country is currently vaccinating only people above the age of 45, having covered health and frontline workers first. India's Interior Minister Amit Shah on Monday paid tributes to at least 22 security personnel killed in the Naxal attack in central Chhattisgarh state. Shah said the fight against the extreme left-wing insurgent group will be now intensified. India's Interior Minister Amit Shah on Monday paid tributes to at least 22 security personnel killed in one of the bloodiest attacks by the extreme left-wing insurgent group known as Maoists or Naxals in Bijapur district of India's central Chhattisgarh state. Security personnel belonging to the Central Reserve Police Forces, Elite Cobra Unit, the District Reserve Guard and the Special Task Force were attacked and killed in firing on Saturday in the tribal-dominated region during an anti-insurgency operation. Shah said a befitting reply will be given at an appropriate time. <laughs> व्यर्थ नहीं जाएगा ये लड़ाई को निर्णायक मोड़ पर पहुंचाने के लिए उनका बलिदान देश हमेशा याद रखे The Naxals have waged an armed insurgency against the government for decades claiming to be fighting on behalf of the poorest who have not benefited from a long economic boom Amit Shah said both central and state governments are working in tandem on two fronts intensify development works in tribal areas and fight against armed groups. In news from Afghanistan, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani will put forward a three-phase peace roadmap for the country during a proposed meeting in Turkey seeking an agreement with the Taliban and a ceasefire before elections, media reports have suggested. This comes as the United States is pushing for the conference to finalize a peace deal between the Afghan government and the Taliban. 
Afghan President Ashraf Ghani will put forward a three-phase peace roadmap for Afghanistan during a proposed meeting in Turkey seeking an agreement with the Taliban and a ceasefire before elections, media reports said. The United States is pushing for a conference to be hosted by Turkey with UN involvement this month to finalize a peace deal between the government and the Taliban as a May 1 deadline looms for the withdrawal of all foreign troops. Ghani's plan will be presented as a counter to proposals put forward by Washington, rejected by the Afghan government that envisage immediately drawing up a new legal system for an interim administration to include Taliban representatives. According to media reports, the document shows Ghani's reaching an end state proposal will include, in the first phase, a consensus on a political settlement and an internationally monitored ceasefire. The second phase will be holding a presidential election and the establishment of a government of peace and implementation arrangements for moving towards the new political system. The third phase will involve building a constitutional framework, reintegration of refugees and development for Afghanistan moving forward. This comes as the date for the Turkey meeting is yet to be decided. Moving on. Scores of members of Uyghur Muslim community held a massive car rally in Canada on Sunday to highlight the ongoing Chinese atrocities against the community. They urged the international community to intervene and hold China accountable. Scores of members of Uyghur Muslim community held a massive car rally in Canada's Toronto to commemorate the 31st Bareen massacre in Chinese-occupied East Turkestan and highlighted ongoing gruesome human rights violations against the community by China. The protesters blamed for the past several years millions of East Turkestan people, mostly of Muslim faith, have been held in concentration camps, prisons and slave labor camps. Mahira Gopur, vice president of East Turkestan government in exile, urged the Indian government to intervene and support the Uyghur nation. I request the Indian government support Uyghur nation. We respect Indian government and we respect their dignity. They never return Uyghur people until today. We didn't hear one even. But some Muslim country keep returning Uyghur people to China and supporting China to genocide in 21st century. People in Chinese internment camps have alleged being subjected to forced political indoctrination and torture and say they have been prohibited from practicing their religion or speaking their language. However, China regularly denies such mistreatment and says the camps provide vocational training. In news from Bangladesh, Bangladesh on Monday imposed a week-long lockdown, restricting transport and public movement as the country's coronavirus cases tally reached 637,364. The prospect of the lockdown resulted in many rushing to leave capital Dhaka over the past weekend in the hope of getting to their hometowns. Bangladeshi government on Monday imposed week-long restrictions on transport and public movement as the country's coronavirus cases tally reached 637,364 with 7,087 new cases and its death toll reached 9,266 with 53 deaths in the last 24 hours. The prospect of the lockdown resulted in many rushing to leave the capital Dhaka on Sunday in the hope of getting to their hometowns, as the shutdown of businesses leaves them with little to do in the city. A group of shop owners and workers protested the lockdown on the streets of the capital, demanding the government allow them to remain open during the business hours if they maintain social distancing and mask guidelines. Meanwhile, people in parts of the country rushed to the markets and hospitals over the past weekend to stock up goods and get tested before the lockdown. This comes despite a vaccine rollout in Bangladesh, which began in February. More on news from Bangladesh. The death toll climbed to at least 26 on Monday in a Bangladesh ferry capsite incident that happened on Sunday. 
The ferry carrying around 50 passengers collided with a cargo vessel and sank on Sunday in the Shitalaksya River, south of Dhaka, also leaving many missing. Some of the passengers had reportedly managed to swim ashore, while rescue operations were still ongoing to find those missing till the last reports came in. The ferry which departed from Naranganj district was travelling to Mushiganj, a police official said. It was packed with people rushing to go to their hometown after the government announced a week-long nationwide coronavirus lockdown from Monday. Experts blame lax safety standards and overcrowding for scores of ferry accidents every year in Bangladesh that has extensive inland waterways. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's Catholics attended church services to observe Easter Sunday with church leaders demanding justice for victims of 2019 Easter Sunday attacks that killed more than 290 people. Church leaders have expressed disappointment over an inquiry report amid growing anger that those responsible have not been prosecuted even two years after the incident. Sri Lanka's Catholics attended church services to observe Easter Sunday with church leaders, demanding justice for victims of the suicide bomb attacks, which killed more than 290 people and injured nearly 500 in 2019 on Easter Sunday. Security in and around Catholic churches was intensified ahead of the midnight mass with armed soldiers on guard and police using explosive detectors to frisk church goers at the entrance. Parishioners of Catholic churches across the Indian Ocean Island attended the main service at the cathedral in Colombo amidst growing anger that those responsible have not been prosecuted even two years after the incident. Tawamat. A sohon with a adi yanaya Sadar not we swayamin Satya deki me asha win Pelenaya Ongi Hadavat Bindila Haritar Kanta van Givagi Balapur to Sunu Jivita Gata Karanava Harita Deva Mata van Vagi. Church leaders say the final report of a presidential commission of inquiry into the attacks claimed by local jihadist organization National Tawheed Jamaat and Islamic State had failed to name the masterminds. They have warned a continuous protest campaign unless there is a clear improvement before the April 23rd anniversary of the incident. Asia's largest tulip garden is now open for public marking the beginning of the new tourism season in India's Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Tulips are usually in full bloom during this time of the year, lending an ethereal atmosphere in and around the Kashmir Valley, which is often called a paradise on earth. Visitors at Asia's largest tulip garden, Indira Gandhi Memorial Tulip Garden, situated in northern Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir, were enchanted to see the blooming glory over the past weekend as the garden hosted a tulip festival to promote tourism. Visitors flocked the garden, located in the foothills of the Zabarwan Hills, as they soaked in the surreal view and rhapsody of colours. Tulips are usually full bloom in and around Srinagar during this time of the year, lending an ethereal atmosphere to the valley, which has been dubbed by many as paradise on earth. एक तो चुलेब गार्डन इस अ वेरी स्पेशल प्लेस क्योंकि ये साल में बस कुछ ही महीनों के लिए खुलता है सो इट्स एक्सट्रीमली स्पेशल एंड ऐसे फेस्टिवल्स आई थिंक कश्मीर में बहुत ही इम्पोर्टेंट हैं क्योंकि दे ब्रिंग अबाउट अ सेंस ऑफ नॉर्मल सी दे ब्रिंग दे प्रमोट टूरिज्म एंड इट आल्सो ब्रिंग्स अबाउट वापस वो चीज देखने के लिए जिसके लिए हर एक तड़पता है कि कश्मीर आए टूलिप गार्डन देख ले और हर किसी से मिले यहाँ पे कश्मीर को जन्नत के कहते ही है तो आइए सब लोग आइए टूरिज्म को भी हम कह रहे हैं कि प्रमोट करो ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा लोग आ जाएं यहाँ पे कश्मीर के लोगों से मिले और हमारी खूब the festival inaugurated by Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manod Sinha also enthralled audiences with dance and singing performances. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline. 
and follow us on Twitter at SAsia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.